Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And uh, today's Top 5 is actually about audiobook production and it is actually operating system agnostic, meaning that everything I'm going to show you can also easily be done from Windows and Mac. The point is I want to show you that it's very possible to produce a audiobook on Linux as well. So before we dive into this, uh, I am doing this video now because my audiobooks are now going out through the distribution channels. The two of the most popular ones that you will find this on, uh, Scribd, I know some of you use. So you can uh, find The Art of Shallow Neighboring, uh, which is my parody Christian book. You can get it over here on Scribd, and you can also get it over here on Audible. It should be rolling out to pretty much any other distribution place uh, in the next uh, next few weeks. It is already out to about a dozen or so that I know of, and I'll I'll try and get links up on my other website. I'll link that down in the description below. Uh, part of it, part of the challenge with that is the uh, uh, there's a lot of back end coding issues that I'm dealing with on the other site. It needs redesigned, and the new WordPress update uh, may not allow that to occur. Uh, but regardless, um, you can get these and also have a look at the affiliate link for Audible in the description down below if you would like to get this um, uh, free with a 30-day trial on Audible. Otherwise, it costs $15. Um, and then any other way, of course, Audible has, you can go ahead and do that. So uh, there will be a affiliate link for Audible down in the description down below, and uh, that's going to give you um, give you a free, uh, free audio book uh, when you sign up. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about the top five things that you need to do. And once again, uh, I did all of my production on Linux, and uh, you can also use all of these exact steps for Mac and for Windows. The point is, if you're working on an audiobook, no matter what your operating system is, go ahead and do it on whatever system you have. This just happens to be a Linux uh, theme channel, and so I'm talking about it over here in the terms of Linux. Number one, you want a good studio setup. So on the studio setup, you want to make sure that you're not in too much of an echoey room. That's what this is all about. And uh, of course, you can uh, you can get good full on professional sound paneling and it'd be amazing. It's not a lot different from that eight dollar egg carton foam that I got from Walmart in the bedding section. Really, not a lot of difference. <laughs> of course, I also have a giant green screen on the wall behind me. Um, and so that muffles some sound and I have a carpet on the floor here. The unfortunate place about this office is that I have all hardwood floors in here. So before putting up the egg crate when I did the first pass, it was a little bit on the echoey side. Now you might also need a good microphone. I actually recorded this first one with my Samson Meteor mic, which is here. And there is actually a link for this in the description down below. And this works really good. The one thing you want to be careful of is you want to be careful not to be bumping your desk and things. So I've gotten into the habit where I'll completely not touch the desk at all. I'll sit here with my hands folded. Actually, I keep one hand in my lap and the other one right over here on my mouse so I can kind of scroll through my reading document. We don't want to do things like, you can hear that. I'm just kind of accidentally bumping the desk. You don't want those types of sounds in your audiobook, and it's uh, the fewer of those types of things you have, the easier your uh, post recording processing is. Now, the other thing that I'm probably going to do on the next audiobook, now that one of them is out and I already know what I'm doing, um, now it's time to start doing all of my other books as audio as well. So for the other ones, I'm probably going to use a more professional sound system, which is my um, I uh, you know hook in a a uh, soundboard into the into the computer, and I have a wireless microphone, and I think that that might actually give me even better audio quality. This does have better audio quality than the the Meteor mic. Um, it's just that it takes batteries and it takes a lot of extra setup, which is why you don't actually see me using it uh, quite as much as. Uh, as I do the other one. And on top of that, this other microphone is perfectly sufficient for nearly everything that I do. Um, but regardless, you can use a good uh, USB studio mic. It works great. Uh, you can use a full-on professional type setup like I have over here. What you don't want to do, you do not want to uh, use a microphone with a headphone jack, particularly if you are on a laptop, because plugging in a 
a, a microphone on a microphone headphone jack on a laptop computer particularly when the fan spin kicks up you will hear it on your audio so that's probably fine for a YouTube channel or for other types of things but you don't want that type of situation on an audio book so have a good studio setup make sure you're muffling your sound and also make sure that that you don't have any other distractions turn your phone off or completely get it away out of the room turn off any notifications on any computers and uh, make sure that anything else that might potentially cause noise is out of your way. So that's your, your studio setup. Obviously, as you can tell, we said nothing about Linux, so that is no matter what you're doing. Number two, you're going to use Audacity. As a great cross-platform audio recording tool, you can use this on any system. You can use it on Linux, Mac, Windows, no matter what you're doing, you can go ahead and use Audacity. You can grab information on Audacity. Of course, here on Linux, it's generally going to be in your repo. One notice, you need to use at least version 2.1 because we are going to install some specialized plugins that we are going to be talking about next. But Audacity is going to give you the ability to record off of your microphone. It's going to give you the ability to to edit your entire system. It's gonna give you the ability to produce the audio files that you need to actually do your audiobook production. If your version on your Linux computer is older, then you will just need to install a stable repo. You can grab that repo online. If you need help with that, let me know and I'll see if I can track it down in the comments. Um, Windows and Mac, just grab the stable version of it, download it, and you're set to go. Here on Linux, it's in the repos. Um, on Linux Mint, what I use, Linux Mint 18, I am actually had to install the stable repo, so I always have the latest version on this computer because, again, there's some plugins we're going to need to install, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Number three, specific plugins. Why do we need specific plugins? Well, the reason is that the audio file constraints, no matter where you're putting your audiobooks, they have some very specific things. They need to be between an RMS of negative 23 and negative 18 dB. That is something that Audacity in and of itself does not inherently do. You also need to have a maximum peak of negative 3 dB and a noise floor no greater than negative 60 dB. How do you know that? Well, what you're going to do is there's a couple things. First is there is an application called an ACS check. The ACS check is going to be a plugin that will check all three of those constraints at one individual time. So you can go ahead and plug in Audacity, run it through AC, uh, ACS check, and it's going to actually show you that it's going to pass. So, so here is uh, basically a little screen. You hit the thing, it's going to check your entire clip or a portion of your clip if your clip is too big and it's going to show you the the peak levels it's going to show you the rms levels the noise floor levels and this is going to tell you does this pass or does this fail acx requirements now acx we'll get into what acx is in a few moments uh, but uh, acx standard is going to be used on every standard all of the audiobook uh, distribution channels need to follow the same exact standards so this plugin is going to work the other thing that you're going to want is the RMS Normalize. This is another plugin that is not built into Audacity on default. There is a Normalize, but it normalizes by peak, not by RMS. Audacity uh, has a plugin to normalize by RMS instead of normalize by peak. And that means that you can tell it to normalize your entire clip to a specific negative DP range. And so with this, you set this to be around the 22, 23 range, and then you're always going to get an audio file that passes the ACX check. So you can come over to this page right here, and uh, you, can, uh, you can go ahead and install the plugins and then normalize by RMS, do any other adjustments. Of course, they'll tell you exactly what you want to do. You want to go into the effect normalization. Uh, do a roll off for speech, which is going to make just everything sound a little bit better. You run a uh, target L, uh, RMS level, and then you set a effect limiter so that this is going to make sure that anything above that ne uh, negative three peak just just <laughs> simply cut off. That way, the thing is always going to pass the system. Analyze it with the ACS check plugin, and you're good to go. 
Number four, you are going to want GIMP. Once again, GIMP is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. This is gonna be your primary raster image editor on Linux. It is just as full featured as Photoshop is. And uh, you will be able to download this, play with it, explore it, whatever you need to do. There's several tutorials on how to use GIMP online. You're going to need this because your audiobook, in addition to having some audio, you are going to need a cover clip, which has to be, these ones actually change from system to system. You wanna shoot for about 3000 by 3000 pixels. Uh, this is a square, uh, a square um, pixel you want, uh, um, and again, the ranges depending on all the different distributions so are slightly different. The absolute best preferred is 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. 72 or higher DPI. So you might wanna do something like maybe 100 or 200 DPI. Uh, so you're gonna do that, make sure it's RGB format, a JPEG, ping, or TIFF. And of course, for all these, you wanna make sure that your, your book and your title is in there. GIMP will make sure you do all of these types of things. Again, we can do a separate tutorial specifically on how to do an audiobook cover. Maybe I will because I have a couple more audiobooks to produce. But regardless, you have the ability here to um, to use GIMP, create your uh, create your cover art, and you will be all set to go on that respect. Number five, you are going to need some online accounts with your distributors. So of course, you can set up your own personal website and just say, hey, hey, buy the things right here. They can download them and then do whatever with them what they want which is a great way to go. I do that for DRM free type stuff and I'll eventually get them figured out how I'm gonna get them on my website. However, if you really wanna be out there, then you wanna make sure that people can find them on the platforms that they use. People like Google, people like Amazon, people like iTunes, people like all these different things. And so you wanna make sure that your books are anywhere where you want to be found. And just like printing real paperback books, you wanna make sure that your books are everywhere and you wanna make sure that your books are not giving you nothing in the way of royalties. So you're going to look for two separate different accounts. Uh, again, just like printing books, you have to publish through Amazon because they are a monopoly on them unto themselves. And to get the best rates for selling your books on Amazon, you publish them directly through Amazon's printers. Used to be called Create Space for Books, now it's KDP. Um, KDP. So uh, Amazon KDP. Well, just like that, Amazon also has a book distributor platform called ACX. And ACX distributes to Amazon Audible and iTunes. I don't know why or how iTunes got in the mix. Uh, but this will distribute to uh, Audible, which is an Amazon company, Amazon, of course, and iTunes. You can distribute through ACX to all of your other platforms as well, but it's going to, actually, I don't think you can. I'm not, I don't remember. I don't remember if ACX does. But the reality is you wanna make sure that your things can be findable on Audible and on Amazon, but you don't want to be paying the commissions of usual or receiving the royalties rather of the usual distributor networks because Amazon likes to really uh, hit it hard on people who don't distribute through them. So you set up an ACX account and there's two ways to do this. One of these is going to be exclusive to, to ACX. I do not necessarily recommend exclusive selling to ACX. The reason is it prevents you from selling it on your own personal website. It prevents you from selling it on places like Scribd. Um, it prevents you from selling it anywhere other than that place. Now, the price of that is a commission hit, a royalty hit of 15%. If you sell your audiobooks exclusive to Amazon and Audible, then you're going to make 40% of the commission royalty back. But if I say, no, I would like to also be able to sell it on my own personal website, they will only pay you 25% of your commission. And so you set up your ACX with a 25% commission. It's worth it because there are a lot of other places to buy audiobooks and you also want to be on those. And so the other the there's two other main ones. This is the smaller one. This is the one that I use. This is called Find Away Voices. Now what you'll notice is that Find Away Voices will also distribute to Amazon Audible and iTunes, it's on here somewhere, I think. 
Uh, it will distribute to Amazon, Audible, and iTunes as well. The challenge is when it distributes from those, you're going to take a double royalty hit. And you're going to, uh, basically what's going to happen is you're only going to see a small percentage of your royalty coming back to you from those particular places because they really want you to list them on theirs. That's why you list it on ACX. You take the, the non-exclusive 25% instead of the exclusive 40%. And then you also list it on Find Away Voices except for Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. You don't put those up so that you have the ability to distribute your books through Find Away Voices to a variety of other places at much higher commission rates, and then you can sell it to Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, specifically through ACX. They take all of the same file formats, all of the same settings, so you really only have to generate your files once. You just need to spend some time uploading it to both places, which is certainly worth it. Now, Find Away Voices is a new player in the market. They've really only been around as a consumer-based, uh, indie-based distributor platform for a couple of years, so it's still a little bit smaller, but still it's very nice. The biggest thing, uh, the biggest downfall about this one, their pricing tab still doesn't work. Uh, their biggest downfall of this is that you have to have your audiobooks done or you have to pay the full rates to produce them. Uh, what ACX allows you to do if you're not into audio production or you're not into narration is with ACX or with the other one we'll talk about, which is called Listen Up, you can get into what is called a royalty share agreement, meaning that you can hire a narrator and a producer to create your audiobooks, and instead of paying them the couple hundred dollars up front it costs, they're just going to take an extra piece off your royalty. Find Away Voices, their downside is they do not have such a plan. They do have places that will uh, they will point you to to produce your books, but you're going to have to pay those out of pocket. The upside and the reason I use Find Away Voices is there is no other cost. So for me, since I'm narrating my own audiobooks and I'm editing and producing my own audiobooks, then it's Find Away Voices for me is way better because I don't have that cost anyway, and it doesn't cost me anything to put my books on their platforms. Also, I should mention at this point in time, ACX also, there's no cost for putting them on the platforms. The other and the biggest audiobook distributor network is Listen Up. The problem with Listen Up is it costs a couple hundred dollars to list your book. So they do have, uh, they do have the royalty share applications as well. Uh, but it will cost you uh, $200 to put it on, uh, to put it up with Listen Up. Um, and uh, let's see, include rights for their audiobook, those producing elsewhere to have your audiobook distributed. So if you were producing your own, it costs you $200. And uh, then you can see what their price breakdown is. And I think that their price breakdown is just about the same as Find Away Voices. I just end up saving that extra $200 because I'm producing them in house. So those are the types of accounts that you want. You either pick Listen Up or you pick Find Away Voices, and then you also do ACX, and you just, on your other two, you don't distribute those through ACX channels. That way you make sure your book is out to a couple different places, um, and you're going to get the, the highest royalties on each one, and it really doesn't take more than an extra half hour maybe of setting everything up. Once you have everything up once, everything's all good to go. So once again, have a look at the link in the description down below. I will have a link to as many of the places I know of where you can get the audiobook, and uh, I will also have in there the um, affiliate link for Audible in the description down below. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.